Okay. Can all of you see my slides? Yes. Cool. Great. So uh, thank you all very much. I'm really honored to be here. Um, so thank you all very much. And this is, of course, uh, work I did with my advisor, Shlomo Zilberstein at UMass. And I couldn't have done it without Shlomo. So thank you, Shlomo. Uh, and yeah, so this is my dissertation, Abstractions and Reasoning for Long-Term Autonomy. Um, so early in my dissertation, you know, first few years of grad school, I learned MDPs and POMDPs, and I was eager to implement them in practice. Um, but I was, I guess, in the middle of my PhD, and I was given an opportunity to work at Nissan to work on their autonomous cars. So I uh, jumped at the opportunity, of course, and eagerly tried to apply the tools that I learned and found that I encountered a lot of challenges um, in trying to bring these, uh, especially POMDPs into practice. Uh, so this dissertation covers a lot of points relating to the challenges I encountered and some of the solutions that I created to try to overcome them. So autonomous vehicles uh, promise to automate and protect the driver. Um, and I'm sure you've heard the huge growth rates, you know, 40% annually growth rates. This is a picture of, uh, of ours autonomously passing a vehicle. And as I mentioned, there's, um, there was a huge challenge that I had to overcome. And really it stems from the fact that this is a long-term autonomy that we're seeking. So this is autonomy deployed for possibly hours with maybe shared control of the system. And as a consequence of acknowledging that this is the case, uh, there's a number of things that sort of come to, to be highlighted. So I'll talk about two of them in this talk, although there's more in the dissertation. Uh, and I'll mention those briefly at the end. So the first is multiple objectives, uh, not just safety, but also legal concerns and driver preferences, as well as um, dealing with handling multiple problems that may arise at the same time. So first I'll talk about uh, some multi-objective models. So consider this uh, autonomous vehicle at a T intersection. It's not just trying to maximize some main objective like getting to the other side of the intersection. Uh, we, of course, we care about a measure of safe control and also we're constrained by legal constraints. This could be as simple as stopping at a stop line or uh, something more complex uh, based on the region you're in. And uh, one thing I discovered is it's very different to look at a robot move as opposed to sit inside the robot as it moves. Um, so these are robots integrated into society and we need to model social acceptability uh, and account for the behavior of it. Uh, and there's many more objective, frank frankly, there's many more. So really what we need is multi-objective planning and learning models for this type of autonomy. So part of the dissertation covered uh, a topological POMDP, which is an extension of a classical POMDP. And I'm sure all of you are familiar with MDPs and POMDPs, but uh, if, if you're not familiar working directly with POMDPs, uh, classical MDP, you know, you have uh, states and you're certain about which state you're in. So this is, uh, you know, you're in state one, for example. In POMDPs, we have a distribution over the true state, a belief. And we update with essentially Bayes rule or uh, particle filters to maintain this belief. In three dimensions like this, uh, simple grid world, we can actually visualize the belief space. And it's this N minus one simplex uh, where each point on it is a belief that you could be in. So the topological POMDP, we have a vector of rewards. And with this vector, um, we describe a preference ordering over the rewards using a DAG with a single leaf or sink reward vertex. And on this DAG, we also add slack along the edges. And what slack is, is the allowable deviation from the optimal value of one objective in favor of improving another. So er earlier work back in 2015, we worked on lexicographic MDPs and POMDPs. And viewed through the lens of a topological POMDP, this is a chain structure where you have some you know, first objective L, arbitrarily you know, L, uh, and it has the full policy space available to it. And when you plan and find the optimal value, you allow a secondary policy to search the space uh, or secondary objective to search the space of policies uh, that's in this constrained um, region. 
And then the third objective is then further constrained, et cetera. And Altman in 1999, many of you may know, uh, proposed the constrained MDP and viewed through the topological PomDP lens, this is a fan structure. So you have a, a main objective T and you're subject to uh, budget constraints or slack constraints uh, for some other number of objectives. And so the topological PomDP represents sort of any combination of these two extremes as well as other uh, chaining effects of them. So the objective for a topological PomDP is to, of course, we care about expected reward. Uh, and you know, you can write the Bellman equation as you would expect. You just have vectors instead of scalars. Uh, and uh, I guess the main difference is that you have um, for any node i in this um, DAG, you care about maximizing its reward subject to all of its ancestors satisfying their slack constraints. So we implemented this um, and a scalable approximate algorithm that did uh, does local action restriction on semi-autonomous vehicle route planning. This is where some roads are marked as autonomy capable for whatever reason, uh, and some are marked as uh, humans only can drive on them. And so uh, we wanna minimize the time to get to the goal while maximizing the time spent autonomously. So if you make the trade-off with different slack amounts, you can get different types of um, you know, routes. And so like the two shown here. Uh, and this is just some results from real maps um, and showing that the approximate algorithm uh, solving this constraint problem uh, is relatively quick and it's also parallelizable on a GPU. So that's how we can handle multiple objectives uh, in this type of setting. But I haven't talked about how to deal with the second to second decision making of autonomous vehicles and other autonomous robots. So if we look at this T intersection again, um, it's certainly modelable as a PomDP because uh, I'm sure all of you have driven and you arrive at a T intersection and you can't necessarily see to the left and the right. So we have this uh, behavior we need to like slowly edge forward for visibility in order to uh, be sure that there's no, no one there. So we really have a belief about the existence of other road users. And uh, there are multiple types of problems. So there's been papers on like handling a lane change. There's been papers on merging on four way stops, but really we have lots of different problems in this domain. And the real problem is that these can happen at the same time. So you could arrive at a T intersection with two vehicles, three crosswalk pedestrians, and you're trying to do a lane change. Uh, so how do you resolve those types of conflicts? And worse off is that we don't know what we're going to encounter a priori. Uh, so a knee-jerk reaction would be to make a giant state space that handles all possible permutations, you know, one car, two cars, with a lane change, without, et cetera. This quickly becomes completely intractable to, to solve. And moreover, we're constrained by limited resources. So really what we need to do is decompose this into uh, smaller problems and solve them individually in order to uh, get this long-term autonomy behavior that we need. So our idea is fairly straightforward. We call it Modia, and it's where we have multiple problems, well-modeled and planned for offline. Uh, and these are PomDPs in our case. And so these are specific, like dealing with a single T-intersection vehicle on the left at night. And online, when we detect these problems, we instantiate these DPs as decision components, uh, each of them recommending an action for the system to take. Uh, and we don't know what we're going to encounter a priori. So we need to resolve these conflicts uh, if, there are, if there are conflicts. And so an executor um, takes in these recommendations and chooses a final action. So just to give you a flavor of what one of these PomDPs may look like, uh, this is a simple T-intersection PomDP for a single other vehicle. So we may care about a vehicle, the AV's location, how long they've been there, uh, a single other vehicle's location, and if there's a gap or not uh, in the intersection. Uh, the actions we consider are to stop, to edge slowly forward, or to go. And with all of these PomDPs that are active as DCs, they're recommending actions for specific points along our route. 
Uh, and for each of these points, we apply this executor function. And a simple one that works quite well uh, is the one shown here, which is simply to stop uh, is preferred to edge, is preferred to go. So the whole you know, control flow sort of looks like this. We have these arbitration points along our route. Um, we have two detected vehicles. In this case, there are two classes of problems, two different POMDPs. This one is passing an obstacle, and this one is uh, just a T-intersection vehicle. We also instantiate virtual vehicles just out of perception, uh, and we have a belief over their existence. So uh, monitors take raw perception and convert them into observation or belief. And the DCs are then instantiated from this database of solutions and policies. Uh, each of them then recommends an action following their policy uh, and perhaps to the same arbitration point. The executor then resolves these action uh, recommendations and the result of all of this is then fed to something like a trajectory planner. So we uh, experimented with Modia in an industry standard simulator with the vehicle dynamics and everything and compared it with two baselines. One is an ignorant baseline that just ignores perception, but follows the law, like stopping at the stop line. And the other is a naive sort of rule-based simple baseline to wait for everything to clear away from the intersection that's causing any conflict, uh, say like 20 meters. And so we see that Modia is much faster than this naive baseline and also avoids any potential incidents that you would encounter by ignoring perception. And this is implemented actually on a real AV prototype. So this is just a T intersection uh, showing Modia. And we can plot the speed profiles over time uh, for these three different, uh, two, the two baselines and for Modia. And these are two different T intersections so that you can see the pattern of behavior. And we see that Modia shown in green uh, stops at the stop line, edges slowly forward, and as the visibility increases, its belief uh, collapses to that there's no other road user there. And when it's confident enough, it will continue and choose to go. And I have a video of this in action. So hopefully it's not too laggy. <laughs> so this is, uh, you'll see in the top right, Modia uh, recommending actions. Each row is a different POMDP. As it arrives at a T, or this is a three-way stop, uh, it stops and it looks at the other two road users, attempts to go. When the other user uh, cuts in front of us, the car slows down, choosing the edge action. It continues to monitor the other two road users and decides to continue going through the intersection. So um, I talked about uh, you know, multi-objectives and Modia and how we can have lots of different models active at the same time. I'll just mention, uh, two other things that are in the dissertation. One of them is semi-autonomous systems, which we want to plan for explicit transfer of control points in our route when we're um, trading transfer or trading between multiple levels of autonomy in the car. And we show that the team of the human and the AV always gets to the goal, does so quickly um, and drives autonomously a large percentage of the time. And lastly, uh, you know, I've talked about multiple objectives and Modia and, um, you know, we have low level path planning, uh, but really what we, what we do in practice is implement these systems separately and then program them. Uh, but we lose the theoretical grounding when we do that mapping. And so in an attempt to take steps towards providing a theoretical framework, uh, policy networks is another line of work where we can say, oh, we have a high level MDP, a mid-level Modia and a low level path planner and they relate in this way. And this is an experiment of it on a robot. So in, in conclusion, I implemented a TPOMDPs and multi-objective reasoning models. I talked to today about Modia and how it's implemented on a real robot. And the dissertation has theoretical frameworks as well as a number of scalable algorithms towards long-term autonomy. And uh, all of this is trying to put POMDPs in the real world deployed on actual robots. So thank you for your time.